It's still Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakul, and we still have in the studio the presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, Prince Adeole Adebayo. And we're looking uh, on this side of the show uh, at May 29, the swearing in, and of course, what happens right after that. Um, before we go into this, we were talking about P President Mohamed Buhari, who, of course, is getting ready to go back to Daura. He said if it's a bit too disturbing for him, he'd move to Niger. He's found a quieter place there. Uh, but he calls to question a lot of other things that's happened under his watch. Um, you spoke about the fact that he abandoned the issue of corruption, the fight against corruption. But as we speak, the National Assembly has ordered for uh, the Attorney General and the Finance Minister to come and give account of uh, some monies that um, they have not been able to account for. Again, uh, the IMF had warned recently about uh, borrowing and spending on the wrong things. And um, also, I think the World Food Programme has also raised alarm about food shortage um, in 2023. So there seems to be a lot of things piling up, waiting for the next government to come in. Our level of indebtedness has gone, it's more than doubled as we speak. Um, and again, I must say that impunity has held sway under this government. Before, before we went, uh, while we were on the break, I, we talked about the fact that the CBN governor, the CBN governor at some point, decided to run for presidency. It, it was shrouded in a lot of secrecy, but then it, it made the light of day. These are things that should not happen in a democratic dispensation, knowing that we have a constitution which we follow that guides, you know, this, what we call a nascent democracy. With all of these things happening, and the APC is still going to be in the reins after May 29. What's, uh, what lies ahead the, the, the next, for the next president? Well, it's all, he will lay his bed and lie on it by himself. He, the president-elect, when he becomes president, is, is a clean slate. How so? Because he has, there is none of the problem that is not reversible. Nigeria doesn't have a reversible problem. So Nigeria, like, maybe Nigeria has like 2,000 problems, but Nigeria has like 1 million solutions. So Nigeria has like a deficit of 30 points, has positive of 3 million points. So Nigeria is a good country to be president. It's a good country you can run. Really? Yes. If you come in, you can start to reverse the issue. Our problems are artificial. There is nothing the new president needs to bring with him. Everything we need to succeed, we have already. Ashebe was right that leadership is the problem of Nigeria. So if the president elects come and he provides leadership, everything will follow. If he comes and provides comedy, then comedy will follow. If he comes in and is, we are managing him instead of him managing the country, then we are in it, we are in for it. If he comes in to bring people to come and compensate them with position, then we are in for it. If he's trying to pay his campaign debt, through our, the way he appoints people, we're in trouble. If he doesn't want to take tough decisions, if he doesn't want efficient government, so it's up to him. And we will not be surprised because Nigerians had 18 people decided to go for this one. Well, there, there are many people who would argue with, with you. They will they argue. Decide those who voted for one. me will argue that they didn't vote for him, but it was a majoritarian system. So the issue is that is the one who has the highest number of votes. Therefore, we have laid our bed through him. Hopefully, he would be about himself. He will not be about the country. And there are many ways you do that. You know that you have reached the apex of power. There's no, nobody who has become Nigeria president needs anybody to pray for him again, that your future will be bright. You're already there. So you may now use that time to transform the country. As, and it's his choice. There's nothing anybody can do. As much as I totally want to agree with you, there's something that's called the establishment. Yes. And the establishment, obviously, I mean, we've seen uh, many people raise alarm about this under the Buhari administration. At some point, his wife said that there, uh, there was some form of a, a group of people, I, I don't want to use the word that she used, who she called them names, animal names, who were taking over her, her husband's government. Um, and we see this, it's not just in Nigeria, there are people called the establishment who sometimes see that, you know, maybe you have the best interest, but then they're the ones who, uh, like uh, 
the strongholds in these governments. How is one man going to be able to deal with the establishment? Why is a one man running for the office if he can't do it? You see, I don't know what animals you call them, but those people are political animals. And you'll find them in any power place all the time. Either they are there for their own interest, or they are there on behalf of some powerful interest, domestic or foreign. The most important thing is that you know my desire to be president of Nigeria. You know how much I want to present Nigeria. So if you ask me today that uh, you cut one of my hands and I'm going to be president, I will offer it. So, but I can't force myself. He's the one who is the president. Mm. So if I, as much as I desire to be president, I cannot force myself to go to the villa. When Buhari is leaving, he lives with all his people. So only two people are entitled to go there. Bola Metinubu and Vice President Shetima. So, when the two of them go in there, it is up to them. Remember you said earlier that it took President Buhari months to appoint his cabinet. Mm -hmm. Nobody forced him. He took his time. He wasted his time, but nobody forced him. So, nobody can go and be a cabal inside the villa unless the president is cabalistic from the beginning. Mm. Because he can gather everybody together and say, thank you all, and lock his door. He's the president. So if he brings anybody in, you have to know that like attract like. And if you study President Buhari's previous encounters and outing in government, you will see that wherever you find Buhari, a small cabal is always with him. Mm. So he has his own style. Now, when you now bring President Chinyumbu now, you will now see his own style. That is why nobody can vouch and say he will do so well. And nobody can swear that he will never do well. It's, you just let him be. Let him set up his team. If you have any piece of advice, you can throw it in the open air. If you have any relationship with him or somebody, you can send advice to him, but don't count on any of those things. When he comes out, the pronouncement he makes, the announcement, he, by the time he announces his chief of staff, you can know the kind of government he wants because from the characteristics of that person, you know that if the person is lazy, clannish, uh, too much... Uh, but but let's, you know, start, let's start with the guys that he put on his transition team. Um, uh, that team is headed by someone who um, some would call a journalist, but we have seen him display hate, uh, hate speech and hate, feel hate crimes, especially in Lagos during the election. Um, with certain kind of rhetorics that was not necessarily good at the time because, of course, we know that our country is divided along ethnic and religious lines. And then, of course, during the hit of the elections, Bayo Nanuga was one of those who were telling people to leave Lagos and go back to where they came from, to leave the Yoruba land. And this is the person who's le leading the transition team. What does that spell for? Well, I don't I know. Mean, because... First, I don't know Bayo Nanuga, and I don't know why he shows, he shows him there. But what I can know is that as a person who trained very well to be president. A transition committee is not very relevant to the governance. They are just people to go and say, where a soldier will stand, this, where the president is coming, it goes like this. They have no impact on government. And uh, what people did in the course of the election is another matter. All of them were crazy. But should, that, should those issues not be addressed? No, they will be addressed. Are we going to be transitioning they will be, to they will be addressed the same in, they will kind of rhetoric? No, they will be addressed in many ways. How? One is that the political parties involved, the politicians involved, on all sides, because I, I saw what they were, the thing they were doing. So we were with Lagos here with Utman, talking about how to develop Lagos, all the plans. People were not interested in that, those. People, media, social media, politicians, they joined uh, whose father, grandfather was in Lagos, whose great-grandfather was not in Lagos. So people like me, who came from Ondo State, what's my business in Lagos? Also, people were doing genealogy, and uh, biography and all So they, 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 they derail, that's their problem. So, but what I can tell you is that the president elect, by being elected, is asked to show his true colors. And when he's bringing his people out, just watch them. Because he, you have elected them. Then you start to watch what he's doing. So what I see generally is that the transition committee, whatever they set up, they will not go past May 29 just to go and parade there and take some oaths and then dance away. Then, proper government will be announced from that day, chief of staff, secretary of government, some special advisors and things like that. Then you will now know 
whether they want to do what we call Faraji government, you know, just like we are big guys, we are here now, or they really want to work hard and serve the people, whether there are people you can say ordinarily they can manage the schedule of the president, they can uh, uh, prioritize the issues, they can make sure he doesn't waste his time, and that he transits from being a politician to a public servant. Because as a politician, you are interested in who likes you, who is on your side, who is carrying your poster. But as president, you are now a servant. Mm. You are now know that I'm working for everybody, whether they voted for me or not, and I'm managing my time where to see that I attend to my job. And I'm looking for competent people, whether they are worshipping me or not, but people can actually help me solve the problem. So because the aim of the politician is to defeat his opponents, but the aim of a president is to defeat the problems of the country. So, but you cannot guess, you cannot second guess. Mm -hmm. And people should also learn one thing. The people I see around him are the kind of people I would not even want to deal with. But I'm not the president. So you, you cannot impose your own will. Mm -hmm. But in the end, what the media owes the president is accuracy of report. Don't carry out the animosity of politics that during politics, I was hired by this group. Uh, during politics, I was leaning towards this other side. Now that this man is coming there, I was make sure that even if he sneezes, I report it badly. If he blinks, I report. No, no, no. You, you have to realize that you like him, you don't like him. You are impressed with him, you are not impressed with him. He is now managing your affairs, managing your security, whether you live or you die, managing your resources, whether you are a prosperous country or not, managing your image, whether you are respected overseas or not. So you now have to give him all the goodwill. Hmm. Don't say, oh, if he's going to the left, I go to the right, I sabotage him. No. All right. That is the attitude to go there. In, in, in one statement, because my guys are saying we have to go, sure. um, what should be the first thing that the Tunipo administration should you know, delve into after May 29th? That's their own problem. They have their own manifesto. Uh, they renew hope. I wasn't interested in it before, but I'm reading it now to see because some of it But as a Nigerian, understanding the, the different problems that we have, what should, we be, what should he be focused on? I, I, when I was campaigning, I said what I would be focused on. First. What I, 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 you know, I, I mentioned poverty, insecurity, and accountability. So it is his choice. He may go opposite. It is his right. But if I were there, that's all I can say. But I cannot tell him. Because I was convincing Nigeria that I'm better than him. Nigerians say now that he's better than me. So let me allow him to go and show how he's better than me. But the issue is that he has his own priorities. So if he follows them, you will know. From his appointment, from his pronouncement, from his priorities. What are the places he goes first? Mm. What are the things he does first? Who are the people who see him most of the time? You can know a man's value by where he lays his treasure, by where, how he spends his time, who he goes to see, and all the people who come to see him. It, you don't be in a hurry. You know, he, he will by himself tell you what he wants to do. And in a few months, mm. we we'll start coming here to review and see. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, I mean, a lot remains to be seen after May 29. I guess all Nigerians will be keeping their fingers. But all of us should be proud that we are in a country that's now getting used to civilian to civilian. Hopefully, to... we will now not stay at that minimum. We will now start to go from quality to better quality. But right now, at least, we are going from civilian to civilian. We are not Sudan, we are not Mali, we are not any of those people in crisis. So, so we that, can we say that at least, God bless Nigeria for that. And then we start to now climb because the fact that you did civil transition smoothly and all of that doesn't mean that poverty will go away, doesn't unemployment will go okay. away. So you need to be serious about those things as well. All right, Prince Adewale Adebayo is the presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, SDP. Always a pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank you and very much. And we're all much. looking forward to um, May 29 with basic breaths. Let's hope well, that... Well, we look uh, forward to a good day and uh, we say God bless Nigeria. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight. Don't forget, tomorrow we will be back talking for development. But if you missed any of our shows, go to our YouTube, Plus TV Africa, and play catch up. I'm Mary Anakun. Have a good evening. <laughs>